In this video, we're going to continue working through lesson three. We're going to study the sixth rule in lesson three, which has to do with the sixth accident of the parts of speech. We've studied number, case, gender, declension, conjugation, and now we're going to study mood, the moods of verbs in Latin. Um, this third lesson has a lot of material. This was the first video where we walked through the introduction to lesson three. We've gone through each one of these different accidents so far, and now we're looking at the sixth, which is modus. So let's just jump right into it with rule six uh, out of ten in lesson three. Rule six is relatively short, and it reads, Modi verborum triti et communes sunt quatuor. Modi, moods, the moods. Modus is the singular form, that means mood. Modi is plural, moods. The moods verborum, of verbs. The moods of verbs triti et communes. Triti means used, commonly used. Tritis, uh, triti et communes. Um, think of tried and true uh, triti. All right, they're used, commonly used by the authors in Latin. Triti et communes, used and common. Sunt quatuor, there are four, four moods of verbs that are common among Roman writers. And they are indicativus, the indicative mood, imperativus, the imperative mood, conjunctivus, the conjunctive mood, and infinitus, the infinitive mood. <coughs> um, just to understand these simply at this point in your studies, and again, you're going to know all of this stuff in great detail as we go forward in this course. The indicative mood is the mood where we express an action as a simple statement of fact. I am teaching, I am teaching, or I teach. It's a simple statement of fact. Yesterday, it snowed. Simple statement of fact, okay? That's the indicative mood. Anytime we make a statement that's just a simple statement of fact, it's indicative. And the mark of an indicative statement is that we can say that an indicative statement is true or false, okay? An indicative statement can be true or false. None of the other moods can be true or false. The second mood, imperativus, the imperative mood or the commanding mood. An imperator in, in Latin means a, a commander or a ruler. Imperativus is the mood of commanding, giving a command. So if I were to say um, study, that's a verb in the imperative mood. Third, conjunctivus means conjunctive mood. Um, there's a, a number of different ideas that can be contained uh, by the conjunctive mood, but the, the simplest explanation that I can give you at this point in your study is that there's, there will be a sentence where there are two verbs. There's a main verb, and then there's a second verb. That second verb will normally be in the conjunctive mood, okay? For example, if I say, I think you should study more. I think is the main verb. You should study is the conjunctive verb, okay? I think you should study more. Now, I think is indicative. It can be true and false. I, I think that or I don't think that. But the you should study because it's should, it's not a true or false statement. It's a conjunctive mood. I think you should study. I think he can do it. Okay, those are examples of conjunctive mood verbs. They're usually used in a sentence with another verb. All right, where the other verb is the main verb. So conjunctive mood, and then lastly, infinitive mood. The infinitive mood is just a general expression of some, uh, of some action, like to love, to read, to teach, to listen. Not I listen, not you listen, not he did listen. It's just a general idea of the verb. 
to listen, to read, to teach. That's the infinitive mood of a verb. And we use it in sentences like, I love to read. Okay, there's two verbs in that sentence. There's the indicative verb, I love, and the infinitive verb, to read. Okay, so there's four common and used modes of verbs. The indicative mood, which can be true or false. The imperative mood, which commands. The conjunctive mood, which is conjoined to another verb in a sentence. And then lastly, the infinitive mood, which infinitive, it doesn't have any end or limits. It doesn't have a person or a number or it does have a tense, but it doesn't have any person or number. Okay, it's infinitive. It's it's unlimited. Those are the four common moods of verbs. Then the rule goes on to say, his adunt aliis, or alii, optativum potentialem ac permissivum. All right, so what it says here is, to these, to these four common modes of verbs are added these, are added others. His adunt alii. To these are added others. Optativum. Optativum expresses a wish. Okay? I wish it would rain. Um, optativum. Okay? Uh, potentialem expresses potential. You can do it. You can do it. And then permissivum. You may do it. I give you permission. You may do it. Those are different ways of expressing an action. Okay? Um, the optative, I wish I did it. The potential, I can do it. The permissive, I may do it. Or I, not, not, it should be, I may do it. I have permission to do it. I may do it. I'm not saying I did do it or that I shall do it. I'm saying I may do it. It's a different mode of expression. So there are four common modes of verbs. And then there are some others, the optative, the potential, the permissive. Normally, what's important here is normally the optative, permissive, potential have the same forms as the conjunctive mood, as we'll see when we get to study verbs. Um, so it's, it's really not that important because uh, the four main moods represent the four different sets of forms and endings that need to be learned. The optative, potential, and permissive usually just use the conjunctive verb forms. Um, just so you know, uh, you may see in, in, in other grammar books, or I may even use it sometimes as I'm talking, you may see someone refer to the subjunctive mood. Subjunctive. It's the same exact thing as the conjunctive mood. Subjunctive means subjoined because it's joined underneath uh, another verb conjoined is the same idea. So subjunctive is the same thing as conjunctive. It's not a different mood. All right. So rule number six, the moods of verbs. There are four common and regularly used moods of verbs, the indicative, the imperative, the conjunctive, and the infinitive. And there are others that may be added to these. We learned about the Optative, where we wish something. The potential, we talk about something that is able to be done. And the permissive, where we talk about something that may be done. Okay? Those are the moods of verbs. That's the content of Rule 6 in Lesson 3. Um, if you're already through Rule 5, I know that you've been studying and working hard, and you know what you're doing now, and it's just a matter of getting through these last four or five rules. So... Uh, it's time now to get to study, work through rule number six. I hope this video helps you with the translation and understanding the idea that's there. But remember, we're just memorizing and storing up rules that we're going to use in our future study. So don't, don't go crazy trying to understand every single thing we face. This is all going to be as clear as you know possible in a few lessons uh, down the road as we start to actually study the parts of speech. For right now, we want to memorize these rules and just tuck them away for later because when we get into 
our parts of speech studies in detail, we're going to use these rules and they're going to be very, very helpful. Okay, so keep memorizing. Memorize rule number six. Make sure you can translate it clearly. If there's anything you'd like to talk about or you have questions, get in touch with me and I'll help you through it. And we'll be on to rule number seven and almost done with lesson three, which is one of the longest and most difficult lessons that you'll face in all of Latin Grammar 1. Okay? So get to work. God bless your studies.